Hi, I'm Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services of the Northfield Church for Sunday, July the 24th, singing a few songs, observing the Lord's Supper, and a message that I hope will be beneficial to all of us. And uh, since uh, perhaps you don't have the same book, Songs of Faith and Praise, I will give you the number from our book and then uh, give you the name so that you could uh, look it up if you have another book so you can sing along with us. The first song is number 246. The title of this song is Let Me Be a Sacrifice. Let Me Be a Sacrifice, number 246. <clears throat> Let me be a sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Let me be a sacrifice in your praise. Let me be a sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Let me be a sacrifice, worshiping your name. Number 477. There is a place of quiet rest. 477, the title is, There is a place of quiet rest. <clears throat> There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless me, Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold fast to wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God, a place where we our Savior meet near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold fast to wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release near to the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, set from the heart of God. Hold us to wait before thee, 
near to the heart of God. Number 325, our song before the Lord's Supper. 325. The title of the song, I'm sorry, is Boundless Love. Boundless Love. <clears throat> Boundless love, unbending joy. This is my life, it's what I know. I can't believe that he selected me. Jesus, my Lord, it's you I owe. He keeps me when I'm weary. He can hear me when I pray. He's even there beside me when I fall. His love surrounds me, even when I go astray. I guess I'd have to say that He's my all. Boundless love, unending joy. This is my life, it's what I know. I can't believe that he selected me. Jesus, my Lord, it's you I owe. When my world falls all around me, I call upon his name. Just in time he takes me by the hand. Whose ways are perfect, just like his son who bore my shame. And I don't even have to understand boundless grace because of Calvary. His life he gave, his love outpoured. I now can live with him eternally. Jesus, my Lord, it's you I love. It's time as we've been instructed in the scriptures to gather together on the first day of the week to break bread. Uh, the song... The second stanza of the song said, Boundless grace because of Calvary. Because of Calvary, because of what Jesus did on the cross, grace has been spread to each one of us who believe that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. And so as we gather about the table, this should be paramount on our mind that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the boundless grace that is upon us came because Jesus was willing to go to the cross to sacrifice himself one time uh, for all humanity. And so as we look at the symbols here of the Lord's Supper, we see that Jesus gave up his body and he shed his blood. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're Grateful that uh, through uh, your boundless love, because of Calvary, uh, we can draw close to you through your son. We're so grateful for the sacrifice that he made, that he allowed his body to be tortured uh, and uh, spat upon, that he allowed that degradation, at least physical degradation, uh, and he did that for us, for the sins of the world. Bless us, bless us as we partake of this bread, as it symbolizes his body. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.
Let's pray for the cup. We're so grateful that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood. And we know the significance of that blood that he shed. It is the blood that washes away our sins. Uh, it is the blood of the new salvation. <coughs> Help us as we uh, partake to remember that Jesus did this willingly for each one of us, that we might uh, have forgiveness and that we might one day live with you. Uh, be with us as we partake. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the giving is not part of the Lord's Supper or the communion. It is something that we are called upon to do each first day of the week, that we are to lay by in store, that we are to give as we have prospered, giving back to the Lord that which is his own. So as we give, let us give with gratitude. Let us give with an open heart. Let's pray. We're grateful to Heavenly Father that we can give. We're grateful that uh, uh, you call upon us to give. Help us to give the way we're supposed to give. Help us to give in a sacrificial manner, knowing that uh, uh, it is your instruction for us to do so. Help us first to give ourselves to you and then give back to you what you certainly deserve. Be with us as we give. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. And the last song we'll sing is a short song, so we'll sing it through two times. Number 993, it is entitled, What a Mighty God We Serve. 993, What a Mighty God We Serve. Sing it through two times. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I hope that many of you sang together with us. I know the Lord was praised by our song. And I hope that uh, uh, we were lifted up through the singing. If you were there this morning, you uh, heard the title of my evening lesson. Kind of an unusual title. But... Uh, Hopefully, I'll explain it to you along the way and make a few points that will uh, lift us up and, and give us pause to think about a few things. The title of my lesson this evening is The Sound of Thunder. The Sound of Thunder. I don't know about you, but uh, God's weather <laughs> um, is very, very interesting to me. I've always kind of been a weather buff. And uh, thunder and lightning, uh, although to many are perhaps a bit scary, maybe some of our animals are scared by the loud sounds, but uh, for some reason or another, I find a fascination to it. Sometimes when there's a thunderstorm, I'll step out the front door and we have a little kind of porch and I'll, I'll sit on the chair and I'll, I'll watch it pass through and and uh, I'll listen to that great thundering sound. And so you might wonder, what in the world is he talking about when he's going to talk about thunder? Well, in Job chapter 28 and 26, Job talked about the power of God to know the path or the way of the thunderbolt. Hmm. Later, when God challenged Job, he asked who other than God, knew the path of the thunderbolt. You'll find that in Job chapter 38, verse 2. And so, what does this message 
about the thunder and the thunderbolt have to do with anything? Well, to me, since God is, is in control of the weather and controls the rain and knows the path of the thunderbolt, surely he is capable of guiding feeble mankind. I'd like to make three points about thunder this evening. First, uh, in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, we find out that thunder was a way of conveying that God was near. When God brought his people to the base of Mount Sinai, the text describes his presence saying this, when it was morning, there were thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain because the Lord descended upon it in a fire. That's Exodus 19, 16 and 18. God wanted the people to know that he was near. And the same message was conveyed thousands of years later by John when he wrote the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, when he saw the throne of God and the Lamb, John wrote this, Out from the throne came flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And if we look through the book of Revelation, uh, as it begins to close uh, all the way down in Revelation 19, again, we see lightning and we see the sounds of thunder that lets us know that God is near and God has conquered. Listen to these words. Then I heard something like the voice of a great multitude and like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. You will find that in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 6. So, thunder first uh, was an indicator that God was near. What else is there intriguing about thunder that we find in our Bibles? Well, second, thunder was a symbol of God speaking to the people. Not only did God prove that he was near by thundering on Mount Sinai, Exodus 19, 16, then God spoke the Ten Commandments to all the people. We find this in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. And later, God spoke by thunder to show his disapproval of people asking for a king. Samuel, in, in the book of First uh, Samuel, it was explained this way. Here's how Samuel, through God, explained it. Is it not the wheat harvest today? I will call to the Lord that he may send thunder and rain. Then you will know and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord by asking yourselves, asking for yourselves, a king. That's found in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 17. God wanted to be the king of the people. But the people did not have infinite minds. The people, as today, had finite minds. And so as they looked around them and they saw different nations and all of these nations uh, that had kings, they thought this was just the way to go. And they thought that they were wiser than God was. Now, again, let's uh, slip on a little bit further in First Samuel. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, in, in the book of Revelation. 
I'm sorry. Let me, let me backtrack. The psalmist has something to say about this. It's the psalmist says in Psalm 81 verse 7, I answered you in the hiding place of thunder. All right? So God's speaking. I answered you in the hiding place of thunder. Several times in the book of Revelation, a message was conveyed through thunder. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. Revelation chapter 14, verse 2. I'm giving you the scriptures so that you can be Bereans and check them out. Interestingly, once when John heard thunder, he was about to write down the message. But the text, Revelation 10.4 says this, I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up the things which the seven peals of thunder have spoken and do not write them. <laughs> I find it fascinating. And I find it fascinating how God, in an inspired fashion, used the term thunder to get his point across. It was the symbol that God was speaking. Okay, we've covered two of the three. The third thing I believe that thunder uh, says to us is that it conveys God's judgment on the wicked. All right? Let's go back to 1 Samuel again. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10. It says, and, and this, this is in Hannah's song. Remember who Hannah was. She was barren, and, and God blessed her uh, with a son, finally. In Hannah's song, she said, Those who contend with the Lord will be shattered against them. He will thunder in the heavens. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. Are these prophetic um, utterings on the part of Hannah? I believe, I believe that they are. So the thunder is associated with the judging of the wicked. He will thunder in the heavens. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. Now in the same book, in 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 10, it says, and again, we read about thunder. Now Samuel was offering up the burnt offering and the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. Remember the Philistines were uh, at that time their, their bitterest enemies. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day against the Philistines and confused them so that they were routed before Israel. Wow, it's pretty nifty stuff. But that's not all. If we go into the New Testament uh, as a, a, a prophetic warning, and remember, Isaiah has a lot of messianic material in it. In the book of Isaiah, it is Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 10. It says, from the Lord of hosts, you will be punished with thunder and earthquake and loud noise. Now, I believe that Isaiah was talking eventually about the destruction of Jerusalem and the signs that there would be with the destruction of Jerusalem. And so when the seventh seal was opened in the book of Revelation, and the seventh trumpet sounded, and the seventh bowl poured out, there was God's 
judgment. And you can go to Revelation 8, 1 to 5. You can go to Revelation 11, verses 15 to 19, or Revelation 16, 17, and 18. Why is that significant? Well, in the opening of the seventh seal, and the seventh trumpet sounding, and the seventh bowl being poured out, God's judgment was proclaimed in loud peals of thunder. I hope you found this lesson uh, somewhat provocative. Maybe you we don't think about things of this nature, uh, but uh, I think they are important to us. They are there in the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God. You know, when when God placed the rainbow in the sky, he explained the message we should receive in Genesis 9, verse 12 to 15. God never did that with thunder. He did it with a rainbow, conveying that he would never destroy the earth by flood again. But he never did that with thunder. But as one reads in the Bible, it's really, really hard to miss the message of thunder. So maybe you'll be challenged a little bit uh, in the next thunderstorm you experience when you hear those loud claps of thunder. Maybe you'll remember that God is near. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. Maybe it will remind you that God still speaks today through his word. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. And finally, when we hear the thunder, maybe it will remind us, as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, that one day all of us, all of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And so the thunder can have the same symbolic message to us today. Right? July 24th, 2022, as it did back in the time of the children of Israel at the base of Sinai, God telling the people that he was near and signifying it by thunder, uh, that God was literally speaking to the people. And finally, that God will one day judge all of us. Now, are, is thunder equated with all of that? Not necessarily, but the symbolism is certainly there. And the symbolism, at least to me, is undeniable in what God is trying to convey through a natural phenomena, this sound that's made in the atmosphere where air bounces together and makes those loud claps, sometimes scary claps of thunder. So perhaps the next time uh, that you uh, are experiencing a thunderstorm, you'll remember some of these things. This is a weather uh phenomena and understand that God created all of this when he created the heavens and the earth. And we can be reminded of the nearness of God. We can be reminded that God speaks to us and we can be reminded that God will one day judge us through Jesus Christ and we will all stand before the judgment seat. In order to successfully stand before the judgment seat of 
God. We need to be in God. We need to be a part of God through his son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> On the day of Pentecost, Peter explained that to the people after Jesus had been crucified and the people were touched in their hearts and said, what must we do? And the same answer that was given to those people 2,000 years ago is given to us today. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you have not experienced that yet, this is the invitation of God to all of us to get into Jesus Christ, to get into God and draw into that relationship so that we can, we can understand that God is near. We can understand that he speaks to us and we can understand that we will stand before the judgment seat of God one day. If you haven't become a Christian, we invite you to come. If uh, you know what you have to do, please get in touch with one of us and we're there. May uh, all of you uh, rest in some of the words that uh, we've listened to this evening and may they have a little significance to each one of you. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we've had together uh, to uh, sing praises to your name, to observe the Supper of the Lord, and to uh, get into your word just a little bit, to make it more significant. Help each of us to delve into our Bibles, to uh, show ourselves approved of you by, by uh, getting to hear your voice through your written word. Be with each of us, dear Heavenly Father, especially be with those who are suffering. At this time, I ask you to be with our brother Ron Clevenger as his mother has passed away uh, late this past week. Be with that family and bless them. Uh, I just pray, dear God, that you will continue to be with us. Bless us. Uh, help us to uh, be comforted by the knowledge that you still reign, that you still speak to us, that you're still near, and that you will one day judge us and we can live with you forever. We thank you for all of this, and we pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I hope you all be safe, and may God bless you all. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah.